Welcome everyone. Just wanna get ourselves ready. I think we're gonna just begin. Okay. Well, welcome everyone to Within Reach Ending Death Penalty in the United States. We're so glad that you're with us today. We're excited to share with you this very first webinar for Catholic Mobilizing Network. So if there are technical challenges, we'll, we'll, um, we'll resolve them as we, as we can here. This is a little bit new technology for us, but we're really excited to share this kind of information with you um, in, from, this, um, from this medium today um, on the first Friday of March. Um, so a couple things about our day today. We're gonna to spend about an hour together. And uh, there are three presenters. Myself, uh, Sister Alaria Buenraposi, who is the co-convener of the Women's uh, Religious Death Penalty Advocacy Council that we're just launching today um, and starting this new initiative. And also Emma Tacky, who is Catholic Mobilizing Network's Associate Director for Community Engagement. So welcome. I guess before we, we dive into the agenda and the program, the exciting information that we have to share with you today, I would just like to frame how we um, came up with this idea for gathering religious women. Sister Alaria has been with Catholic Mo Mobilizing for about seven years. She's a Camboni missionary sister, and she has been really traversing the country, talking to religious sisters and sharing information about the death penalty and restorative justice. She's been um, finding out, listening to what you all are doing in, in your area, in your ministries, and then connecting with the national platform of Catholic Mobilizing to be a national voice and kind of harnessing activism and advocacy and sharing educational tools with the church. Um, so it's from Sister Ilaria's experience and also the experience of um, so many of you just doing so much in your ministries and, and where you are um, that we have been talking for the past six or seven months about how do we harness this energy? How do we bring women religious together and collect their, their motivation and their momentum, their passion, their faith? toward ending the, the death penalty to do something bigger, to leverage our power together and to steward our influence to actually put an end to the death penalty. Um, we know that what you're doing is working, our advocacy, our, our calls for clemency, our prayers, our working with state legislatures to actually repeal the death penalty, so many ways that we're, we're kind of out there energizing this movement. And so we recognize the importance of women religious and we want to build upon that momentum and garner that influence um, so we can really make a final push to ending the death penalty in the United States. Um, so today is the first of our, of our webinars. We will be having them about every three months. It's just a collective way for us to to focus our energy and do advocacy together. So we have some facts and figures to share with you today. We've got some exciting highlights and models of how the church has been a big part in, in changing the way the public feels about the death penalty in the United States. Um, and then some important dates that are on the horizon, um, as well as some state um, facts and some state initiatives to end the death penalty state by state, um, sort of every small effort to actually chip away at the death penalty here. So that's where we're going today. Again, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Your voice is critical, and we're so glad you're with us. Um, so I'm going to move us along on the, the platform here, the, the PowerPoint. Again, Sister Alaria as co-convener for the Advocacy Council, Emma, the Associate Director, and myself as Managing Director. So welcome. Sister Alaria will lead us in a prayer. Uh, Lord, bless our gathering together today and grant us your spirit as we embark on this new phase of networking with religious women. 
advocating and ministering to end the use of the death penalty. Make us instruments of your love and mercy for everyone while we proclaim the holiness and dignity of all life from its conception to its natural death. For Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Alaria, did you want to offer a word of welcome? So many of these sisters know you. So did you want to say hello? Hi, welcome. Uh, we are so happy that you are here today. And uh, this is an experiment for us So, uh, with the webinar technology. So bear with us. And uh, uh, please, any suggestion about the webinar itself and whatever we can do to connect better and with uh, the work that you do, just let us know. Thank you, Sister Laria. So this is the agenda that I have uh, just shared with you about uh, where we're heading today in our webinar. Um, a couple housekeeping facts. One, your participant window on the top of your screen um, has two options to communicate with us. You're all muted right now um, because the way the, the feedback reverberates. So um, how we'd like to be in conversation with you and we actually Actually encourage that during this webinar there's two mechanisms for that one is through the chat section and that's for you could do public or private chats um, with us but um, if you want to do a public chat you know you just write in your your questions your thoughts your clarifications that's something that's ongoing along the way and my colleague Daniel Flynn he's in the background here he's monitoring those questions in the chat and he's He's going to be communicating with you so um, that we just keep informed here all together. The other is the Q and A function. It's got a question uh, in the box above, again on that on that screen that um, that bar. So the Q and A tab there is for the questions that you're thinking of that you want us to answer in the Q and A section for later. But just go ahead and jot those questions down now, and we'll be reading through them and sorting them as we go. So again. The chat is for questions as they come up, technological questions or other, um, clarification questions if you want us to stop and go over something again. And then Q&A, just general questions you have that we'll answer later on our time together. Okay? So we wanted to start off with just uh, a bit about the trends. Where is the death penalty heading in the United States and what do you need to know about it? Um, gratefully, the Catholic mobilizing part of the way we operate is we're very closely connected to the federal and state initiatives to abolish the, de the death penalty. And many of them are secular, you know, they're not Catholic or religious groups who are, are following this from a faith or a moral perspective. They're following this because they're lawyers, they're attorneys, they're, they're folks who are very much interested in, in this at a policy perspective. So we're very much tied in in there and we get the, the latest and the best uh, updated details around where these trends are heading. Um, but also, uh, it just gives us a way to be a network inside of a movement that's much bigger than just the Catholic Church's perspective on the death penalty. So in that regard, we're very closely connected with the Death Penalty Information Center, which is a real clearinghouse for information around the death penalty, its, its status, where it's going. Um, what I will tell you is that each year, DPIC, the Death Penalty Information Center, offers a report um, that really gives the state of the death penalty. And we wanted to offer a few highlights from that report that give you a sense on where things are. Number one, very encouraging news, the public support for the death penalty is on the decline. It's moving, it's declining, public support is, is growing against the death penalty. So at current, 55% of the population says it supports the death penalty, but I want to let you know that that is a 5% decrease from where it stood last year. So this is the 2017 numbers with 41% opposing it. What's really important to know about this Gallup poll is that it's been going on for many years, for many decades. So it's kind of the best consistent read of the public support for the death penalty. But very interesting to realize in the current report, 
the, the decline of the death penalty can be seen amongst some of the most avid, what had been avid supporters of the death penalty. So typically conservatives. And that we saw was a 10% decrease this past year. What this translates to is um, at the state level, when there are initiatives to repeal the death penalty or chip away at, at how it's um, used in the, in the states or within the counties, this means that there's more bipartisan efforts. It's not just your typical sort of, say, bleeding heart liberal who's going to be bringing up bills to repeal. It's actually very much a bipartisan uh, or at least moving in that direction. So that's very promising for our efforts to end the death penalty. I wanted to point out um, another significant factor, and that is, you know, who are we executing? Oops, sorry. Who are we executing? I think that's a question that we can raise and, and know that um, the support or the, 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 the revelations around who is actually being executed is becoming pretty consistently in a few areas um, shown to be people who are severely mentally ill, who have verifiable intellectual disabilities, who have some um, revelation of a brain, a brain damage, have suffered severe trauma, especially during childhood, or they're innocent. Um, last year, the FAIR Punishment Project and also um, the Death Penalty Information Center went over a series of cases where there was executions and found that 90% of them had one or more of these factors prevalent in those cases. So you're seeing much more media about this and the public is becoming much more informed about what brings upon uh, what, what, who, who we are executing. It's not the worst of the worst. It's truly the most vulnerable among us. Um, in terms of exonerations and actual innocence, we're looking at 161 people, men and women, since the, in this modern period of the death penalty. So basically since the Supreme Court um, reinstated the death penalty in 1973. So last year alone, there were five exonerations, five people had claimed innocence and were shown to be actually innocent and then removed off of uh, death row. So it's an important number to know and it's just continual reinforcement, affirmation that we again are killing the, the most vulnerable and in some cases, even innocent people. And then the last factor I will raise, there are many um, points around this, highlighting the report and various reports and on where the death penalty is moving in this country. But what I'd like you to know is about the death sentences and executions. They are amongst the lowest in history. Um, the, the most widely uh, known county in the country in Harris County, Texas, that, that executes the most people um, and sentences the most people to death in 2017 did neither of those things. Neither executed anyone nor sentenced anyone to death. So this was truly amazing, truly historic, and I think a true turning point in where we have the, the most prevalence of the death penalty in the country. We're seeing a turn, a real reconsideration that this is the, the direction we need to go. But we also wanted to share with you the church trends and where the Catholic Church is in all of this. Um, certainly we know that Pope Francis, the Holy Father, has made many proclamations around the death penalty. You probably remember um, in 2015, you may even remember where you were that day uh, when he was before the U.S. Congress. That's a very historic moment. And he mentioned an abolition of the death penalty in the United States. So since 2015, he continues to make um, very uh, clear statements of the church's opposition to the death penalty. He talked about the church seeing this as contrary to the gospel in no uncertain terms, and that it have death penalty heavily wounds human dignity. So we have uh, the, the leader of the Catholic church or around the globe very very clearly denouncing death penalty and calling for its end. So that's great. That's not new news, but that's something that we can hold and be emboldened by uh, in our work.
But there are really powerful examples of Catholic leaders leadership. And I just wanted to raise a few because it, it takes the whole church. It will take all of us to, to end the death penalty. And, um, and so there's at many levels, very profound work happening to, to make an impact in changing the way the public feels. And certainly our church, there's still work to do there, but there's real strides being made in, in opposing the death penalty. So I wanted to hold out that in August of 2016, um, you all would remember um, Sister Paula and, um, and Sister Margaret who were living in Mississippi and who were murdered. Uh, there was one sister who was a sister of Charity of Nazareth, and of course, Sister Margaret was a school sister of St. Francis. These sisters had been working and living in the hungriest, poorest county in the country, and they, they were murdered. Um, but what was so powerful was the response of the two congregations uh, coming immediately to the public and saying, we value life and that we have worked tirelessly to end the death penalty. Um, so their witness in such a moment of despair and grief was, um, was widely seen and it was a real testament to our faith and um, at all costs, we believe in life. So I just want to put that out there for all of you. I know it meant a lot to us here and we were watching it very closely and I'm sure you all were too. So those were, that was a very profound moment. But again, at all levels in the church, um, I want to also point out that last year in April of 20, um, you probably recall the, in Arkansas, there were uh, there were drugs that were uh, set to expire and lethal injection protocols. Um, and so the Bishop of Arkansas of the Little Rock Diocese came out against setting the executions of eight men to be killed over the course of 11 days. This all started on Easter Monday um, and the Bishop Anthony Taylor from Little Rock was very public in his denouncing of this kind of action. Um, but what so also what what is also so very um, you know powerful and and public in his witness was that not only was he against the executions in April, of which there were four, so it was half the number um, in in actuality, but by January of 2018 when the March for Life came to Little Rock, something that's been going on for decades there, Bishop Taylor was very clear that he was refusing to attend the march and attend the rally because the attorney um, general who was gonna be asked, who had been asked to speak and had accepted to speak at that march um, had pursued killing and executing those, those eight men. And he said, there's no way. Pro-life means all life. And, for that reason, I won't attend this rally and attend this, um, this mass where the attorney general will be. So, um, so he, you know, was very public and he was, that was captured in the media and he was interviewed about this. So he was taking it not just in, in, in a direct response to the executions, but he was making it um, something that he was going to stick to and calling all life being of value. So we watched that closely and um, we were inspired by his efforts. So the two other things I wanted to mention were um, Catholic conferences in, in the US here, all over dioceses and states all over the, um, the country are working very closely with Catholic Mobilizing Network and really calling for um, commutations and they're calling for, um, they're just you know, calling for opposition to the death penalty in their states. Most notably recently, there was a very prominent case brought forward in Texas where a son had killed his mother and his brother. He also uh, was involved in the killing of, or the attempted murder of his, his own father. His father survived and was calling for, um, calling for clemency for his son. So this is the Bart Whitaker case. This is just about a week and a half ago. Um, so the Catholic car, conference very much in consultation with Catholic mobilizing and others 
were just pushing, pushing Governor Scott Abbott in Texas to commute um, Bart Whitaker's sentence. And, uh, and he did. He actually commuted his, ex his execution at the very last minute, but it's working. We sent thousands of letters through our CLIC system. Uh, and again, the Catholic Conference had maneuvered uh, with the cardinals and the bishops in that state to really put pressure on the governor. So again, a powerful action. Um, and lastly, what I would want to share with you is that in May of 2017, Catholic Mobilizing brought forward, a, a launched a National Catholic Pledge to End the Death Penalty. Um, and that is an effort to get Catholics of all levels, ep Episcopal-wise, lay, priests, women religious, you know, people in the pews, students, elderly folks, I mean, across the board, anyone and everyone, Catholics and people of goodwill, committing to educating, advocating, and praying to end the death penalty. It's just a little card, and you can fill it out, and we've been collecting those signatures and really building this momentum within the Catholic Church in a popular way to end the death penalty. And nearly 20,000 people have already signed that less than a year now. So we're really excited about that. Many of you have signed, many of you have signed on um, within your religious congregation. You have uh, corporate statements against the death penalty or have come, come collectively for that reason to sign the death penalty as one name, as one congregation, or you've done it individually. So we thank you for that. And that's really having effect of just bringing people together for, for a push to get this over the finish line. It really does take the whole church. So I'm going to give myself a break from speaking and you from hearing my voice for a minute here. And I'm going to kick it over to Emma Tacky. Yes. Um, she is going to bring us up to speed on the, on the states and, what is, and what is happening in some, in some very key states, states around repeal or around actions to chip away at the death penalty. So take it away, Emma. Great. Thank you, Chrisanne. I'll just get my slide up here. Okay. Thank you. So, first of all, hello, sisters. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to be with you here today. Um, the first state I want to talk to you about, um, well, first I'll give you an overview of what this map means. Um, so you see here, we have a map of the United States, and the ones with red balloons are ones that are that we call active states that are still using the death penalty. The states that have a yellow or a golden balloon are ones that uh, are states that use the death penalty but are seeking legislation to change that or end the death penalty in their state. And then we have one uh, green state, which you'll see over in the uh, northwest, Washington. That's a state that's been in a moratorium, which I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so that's a moratorium state that's seeking uh, repeal legislation. And then we have our purple states, which means those are moratorium states, which means the governor currently in office has stated that they will not seek any uh, executions during their time in office. And then the states with balloons, uh, those are abolition states, meaning states that have fully repealed the death penalty and no longer use it as um, a means of punishment in their state. Okay, great. And then we'll just go to the next slide. No, I'm not able to. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there you go, Emma. There we go. Thanks, Chrisanne. <laughs> okay, so the states will run through, the first one being Washington. Now, as I'm sure um, a lot of you know, if you receive our newsletters or, or follow us on social media, Washington has been a very exciting state for us to work in and watch this year. Uh, Washington has been, since 2014, in a governor-imposed moratorium. So they have not sought any uh, executions in Washington. But this year, uh, a really exciting bill came up in the Senate uh, with strong bipartisan support for full death penalty repeal. And it passed in the Senate, and then it went on to the House. Uh, and actually, today is the last day that the House decides to um, vote on it. So it's the last day of uh, the legislative se session in Washington. Um, and so we're really asking folks um, in Washington to, to email their uh, representatives and ask them to support death penalty repeal in Washington. Uh, so some of the actions we've taken um, working in Washington, we've been working closely with the Washington Catholic Co Catholic Conference of Bishops um, and the local state coalitions and partners working on death penalty repeal. 
Uh, we've written bulletin announcements for the Catholic Conference to distribute to their parishes. We've created uh, state-specific parish materials educating Catholics about why repealing the death penalty is a pro-life issue and why Catholics should care about it. Uh, we've, uh, in conjunction with the Catholic Conference and our state partners, have been sending out regular action alerts that you know, compel people to contact our legislators to support this repeal bill. We had an article uh, written by Senator Mark Melosha, who was Catholic and supportive of death penalty repeal. Uh, we had an article of his printed in the Catholic Sentinel, which reached many folks in Southern Washington. Uh, we've helped prepare talking points for Bishop Muggenberg, who testified at the Senate hearing, uh, talking about his Catholic convictions and beliefs about repealing the death penalty. And we've worked um, with Joe Sprague, who's the executive director of the Washington Catholic Conference. Uh, he was interviewed by a radio show called Sound Insight with Dr. Curran uh, to discuss the importance of death penalty repeal. So all these avenues and channels of reaching um, Catholics uh, in different ways in Washington to educate them about repealing the death penalty and motivating them to contact their legislators and to um, you know, talk to their families, talk to their friends and communities about really showing up to repeal the death penalty. So we will actually know by the end of today where the state of Washington stands in terms of the death penalty. They'll either have um, you know, voted to repeal it or um, not have voted on it or have voted on it to not repeal it. So we, we will know and we've been working very hard um, in Washington. So please, please send prayers that good news comes our way and comes for the state of Washington. Uh, another state that we're working closely in and whose legislative session actually hasn't begun yet is Louisiana. I was actually down in Lafayette, Louisiana last week meeting with um, a group of Respect Life directors from all seven dioceses of Louisiana, giving them uh, state-specific uh, materials for their parishes uh, because there is a repeal bill coming up in the Louisiana session, which begins March 8th, uh, for full death penalty repeal. So I went down there to connect with folks to um, get them motivated to talk to their, their parishes, their dioceses about death penalty repeal, uh, we discussed how important it is um, that repealing the death penalty is a pro-life issue. Uh, we've been working with the Louisiana Catholic Conference to put together a video um, of one of the bishops, Bishop Amond, speaking about the importance of repealing the death penalty. So this is a really timely video that will be ready um, just in the nick of time for the Louisiana session to begin. Um, so that's, that's really exciting, Washington and Louisiana we really have our fingers crossed and chances are good uh, for repeal this year for them. Now in Utah, they're also considering a death penalty repeal bill in the House. Uh, the Speaker of the House actually spoke to the Republican caucus yesterday. Um, we don't have an update yet on how that went, but if it went well, there will be a vote, a floor vote in the House on that repeal bill soon, and then it'll move to the Senate. Now, the session in Utah ends March 8th, so things are moving really quickly, and if the repeal bill does move to uh, the Senate, um, then we'll, we'll have to act fast to get some action moving um, on there. Um, in New Hampshire, a bill was uh, released uh, was posted last week in the Senate. Um, there'll be a hearing in the next few weeks. Now we did get an update that the governor in New Hampshire publicly stated that he will not support a repeal bill this year. Um, so really we're focused on continuing to educate our, our Catholic folks in New Hampshire um, on why repealing the death penalty is critical. So maybe in a few years, uh, if the New Hampshire repeal bill comes up again, people will, will be ready to, to act on it. Um, in Kentucky, there was a, a Senate bill uh, filed um, that was about, uh, uh, it was a SMI bill, which means severe mental illness bill that would prohibit uh, Kentucky from executing anyone who had a severe mental illness. Um, that was heard in the committee uh, just this week. So we'll, we'll get you an update on that soon. And then there is also a House bill uh, in Kentucky that was for a full repeal of the death penalty. And there will be a hearing on that bill in a few weeks as well. Okay, states to monitor. States that don't have repeal bills, but we do want to keep a close eye on. Uh, one would be Iowa. Now, Iowa does not have the death penalty. 
Um, but there was a couple bills that came out this session that were um, trying to bring it back, but those uh, fortunately died in committee and were not, not put to the floor for a vote. So Iowa is safe for now, but it's just, it's a good state for us to keep an eye on just in case another bill like that comes up again. Um, in South Dakota, uh, it's interesting because um, there's also an SMI bill um, that came up, but also like, uh, like a, it also died in committee, which is great. Okay, so our high use county states, those mean um, states that have counties that uh, sentence people to the death row disproportionately. And they are Florida, Texas, Nevada, California. Um, and Ohio. So Florida, actually, really interesting news. Um, there are counties that sentence people to disproportionate, disproportionately to death row are Duval, Orange, Pinellas, and Hillsborough. Uh, but there was polling released by the Floridians for Alternatives to the Death Penalty just this week, which showed really exciting information. 68% of voters in Pinellas County, known for its high rates of sentencing people to death row, showed that 68% of voters are not supportive of death row. They would rather see people um, in prison with life without parole. So that's really encouraging coming from a county um, that's, so, that's so known for its uh, death sentencing. So this is really encouraging news. And there were also in Florida a couple bills that came out um, asking for repeal of the death penalty. While they, they didn't really have a chance of passing, we did have people send thank you letters um, to the sponsors of the bill. And this was just a way to keep the education flowing, keeping people talking about death penalty repeal. And of course, in Texas, of course, everyone knows that Texas uh, executes people at a disproportionate rate. Uh, we have Harris, Dallas, and Bear County um, are our high use counties in Texas. And recently, the most recent news out of Texas is there was a, a death penalty case. Uh, Thomas Bart Whitaker was scheduled to be executed last week, February 22nd. Um, he had killed his mother and brother and shot his father. But actually, his father was one of the biggest advocates asking for um, clemency for his son. And CMN supporters and people all over Texas really came out and asked the governor to um, uh, give Thomas a stay of execution. And there's a lot of publicity and a lot of action around this case. And it, it happened. The governor, governor Abbott uh, gave Thomas a stay of execution, so he will not be executed. And then we have Nevada. Um, Nevada is an interesting state because it has not executed anyone in several years, but Clark County is one of our high use counties that we're watching because they do um, sentence people to death at disproportionate or give people death sentences at disproportionate numbers. Um, and Chris Sand and our executive director, Karen Clifton, will actually be visiting Clark County in just a couple weeks. Now in California, uh, there is no legislation in California this year for death penalty repeal, but we are um, asking gov the gov Governor Brown to commute all death pet row sentences before uh, his term ends later this year. So there's a lot of education and grassroots movement around that as well. And then in Ohio, Ohio is actually um, one of the states where we're monitoring. It should not be in the highest counties. Uh, section. I apologize for that. But Ohio is one of our states that does have uh, legislation surrounding severe mental illness. So a bill is up recently um, that would prohibit Ohio from uh, executing anyone with a severe mental illness. So that's kind of the state of the states. And I know that was a lot of information. I just threw it everyone. So I am, you know, I'll be here for the Q&A afterwards. Um, and hopefully you're all signed up for our newsletter and following us on social media. Uh, to get these state updates as they come in. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emma. Super. Well, I'll just remind us that uh, we have two ways to communicate with us. One is via the chat, um, and that's just for general, general sort of issues that come up, clarifications, etc. And then if you have specific questions for us, use the Q&A on the bar at the top. Just click that and, and stick your question there so we can, we can put it in line. Um, so thank you. There's obviously lots to know about the various states and you can find all this information on our webpage, but we really wanted to give you the latest and the greatest facts to get you empowered and get you fueled up for what advocacy and education you'll be doing. Let me move us to the next slide. 
Well, it's, um, it's pretty exciting for us today to be able to announce what we're calling Faith in Action First Fridays. And this initiative came out of some listening sessions that Sister Alaria and I were engaged in around women religious, the Advocacy Council, and then just what women religious need. And what we heard time and time again was that women religious are tireless advocates and they are involved in many issues. Some involve human trafficking or immigration, um, gun violence. There's so many issues that are pressing in our days. So how can we as Catholic Mobilizing offer information that is um, brief and specific and we can tease out what's the most impactful for women religious to get involved because we know that your energy is is there and your enthusiasm is there sometimes you just don't have the time to uh to to sift through that information and make this your prime primary uh advocacy issue so recognizing that um we wanted to put together a tool that you could use that in a day in a day of the month once a month committing to a Friday activity, um, the first Friday, to say, I will do something this month. 12 times a year, I will make sure that I'm keyed into what's going on and I will take an action that's most impactful. You can take actions every day. Um, at least that's what our website is for. But in terms of the first Friday of the month, sometime that day, keying into this new website um, that I will show you, this new web page. There it is, can you all see it? All right, so Faith in Action for th First Fridays um, is really the most up-to-date featured material that we want to put before you. Um, Fridays, as the webpage sort of details, First Fridays are really significant in the Catholic tradition. There's many devotions, they've been happening for hundreds of years, and it's a special day. It has a day of relevance and significance, Christ was killed on that day, um, executed really on that day. So for those reasons, we chose that day to issue these first Friday faith and action tools. Um, so let me scroll down and show you what we have. Can you all see it? Okay, super. So when you come on to the faith and act first fr faith and action first Fridays, um, what you'll see is a prayer. This should take no more than five or 10 minutes every first Friday. You'll see a prayer to start you off and just get you centered on mercy, God's mercy and what we're trying to share in our action. So there's a beautiful prayer there. And then we immediately go into advocacy, what you can actually, what actions you can take that have immediate impact. Um, let me show you what we've done for this month, for example. We're always going to have a legislative action that gives you more of that system change approach, giving us, um, you know, trying to enact better laws, repeal the death penalty altogether. The legislative action section is where you'll find that information. Now, there are many issues, as you just saw with Emma, and how many states are kind of teetering things along, or some are full-fledged full force, like today with Washington State. We will know today um, the fate of death penalty in that state alone, but there are, are many states, there are 31 states that have the death penalty, so we're, we're, we're moving on lots of fronts. Um, the legislative actions that we have in this featured box here is going to be the action we want you to take that day. So in this case, we want you to reach out. If you have any connections with Washington State, if you have sisters who are living there, if you're a sister who is currently residing in Washington State, you know other people, family members, please help them take that action. Please click here below where it says take action and it will bring you right to the one click letter. Um, you enter your, your name and your, and your zip code and it will put you uh, exactly in the district that is associated with you and your legislature, legislator. So it's an exciting way for us to direct your advocacy energy this one day of the month. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't visit the first Friday page any day if you just want to see really what we're what we're um, trying to to feature. We have an option for more state actions, or if you want to say, well, what, how about death penalty in my state? You can find the map that we started off with 
in Emma's section with all the little balloons. You can find that on our webpage. In fact, it's on our main homepage. But if you want to see death penalty in your state, you can click this box here, the death penalty in your state, and it goes right there and it gives you important information for that particular state. So again, that's our system change legislative action piece. The second action will always be an execution action or a call for clemency. Unfortunately, there are somewhere between 20 and 30 executions typically every year. Um, and so each month, um, in some cases, in like I said, last April, there were eight in one month. Uh, in the month of February, we had three uh, that we were following very closely. This month, we're looking at two, and one of them is right here, stopping the execution of Russell Bucklew. So there's a bit of information on his case and the specifics around it. And again, you can click Take Action. And this letter will go straight to the governor. Um, so it's, it's all there for you. It's a one click action and it's just, it's ready for you to take. You can learn more about his specific case in the learn more section. And then right under execution actions, you can see upcoming executions because we have all the executions that we know of, the dates that have been set are also on our homepage at the bottom on the Catholic Mobilizing, um, you know, our homepage. So, so you can find all that there, but this is the one stop shopping, if you will to get that specific action, advocacy action information. So one for legislation, one for clemency, those actions are here. And we'll do the hard work of figuring out what, what you need to do to be most impactful. And then I'll take you to the bottom section. It's, uh, it's certainly uh, has significant importance. It's around formation. It's around our ongoing educational knowledge of the issue, the, the issues that kind of are embedded around death penalty, certainly criminal justice reform, certainly restorative justice. Many of the issues that we, we um, the, the issues that are very connected to, to death penalty and what we're following. So we're gonna choose one educational resource to feature um, to let you know, hey, like if we were talking to you, we would say, this is what we want you to see. So this is us being able to communicate that to you. So right now it's our new book that just came out in December. Redemption and Restoration, A Catholic Perspective on Restorative Justice. It's a copyrighted book by Catholic Mobilizing. We have a chapter in there. It's theological. It's deeply rich. And it really provides the foundation with which we understand our concept of justice, inspired and informed by our Catholic teaching. So that resource we want you to know about. We're excited to share it with you. And then the prayer resources. We have an amazing prayer uh, service around Holy Saturday. Um, it's new this year and we're really proud of it. And we wanted to, um, to inform you about it. So obviously in this section, you can get more educational resources where it says more educational resources. We have a whole library of resources and you can sort by what you're looking for. Is it a podcast? Is it a book? Is it, um, is it a prayer? Is it liturgical? Is it, you know, a, pre a Prezi presentation? All that stuff can be found on that click and sorted by that click. And then where it says more pre prayer resources, we have a whole host of those kinds of resources too. And you can link in from this click here. So First Fridays really is just our way of saying thank you for being um, being part of this, thank you for joining in this collective action, and we want to do something to support that collection, collective action. Um, last but not least, I want to tell you about an exciting conference that's coming up. So always on the sidebar of the First Fridays is going to be um, some event that we want to make, uh, make you aware of. In this case, it's April 25th. We're having a public, free, to the pub, free, free and open to the public um, conference at Catholic University. Uh, here in Washington, D.C., specific to um, restorative justice, and it's entitled the same name as the book that we just published, so Redemption and Restoration. Um, it's an exciting lineup, and here is where you can find more information about it. So again, we're just going to draw your attention to a, a, an event that's coming up that we are really excited about. So that's, that's First Friday's um,
Oopsie. Okay. So then we wanted to share with you a couple of save the date pieces. Um, I wanted to use this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about the advocacy council that you've been hearing about and that you read about in the survey. That's how we got your, your name and connected to this webinar today. Um, as I said, it's a way for us to convene religious women and try to embolden and empower and equip religious women to, to be collective in their actions and really in our actions around ending the death penalty. So this is going to be something that Sister Alaria and I are co-convening for now. This is our, our initial year where we're listening and we're learning, we're, we're um, tuning in to sisters and really trying to make this council something that works for religious women and that responds to their needs, but also responds to the, the climate around the death penalty and is really meaningful and effective in its action. So we have a few things uh, in that the Advocacy Council in its, its very nascent stage is offering to you. And they are what I just described around the first Friday emails. Um, we are, if you let us know that you're already interested in first Fridays, uh, we'll be sending out an email every morning of the first Friday of the month so that we're reminding you there's an action you can take and it'll just be right there in your inbox. Um, it's something we'll be growing to and sending out, um, you know, inquiries amongst uh, in our newsletter and other places. We're just going to be sending out blurbs to let folks know that they can join in on this. So it's going to be growing as we as we go. Um, we also wanted to make note of the fact that regional meetings for the LCWR regional gatherings, their spring gatherings are happening coming in March and April. And um, Sister Lari, this was her suggestion, uh, that those are great channels, those are great convenings to uh, share the word about First Fridays, about the Advocacy Council, and just about this initiative to get more religious women kind of working together collectively around um, ending the death penalty. So if you're going to that regional meeting, feel free to share this information. I'm happy to pro provide a, like a one page synopsis of what we're doing and how folks can chime in um, or get involved. So keep that in mind as you're heading or someone in your congregation is heading to the regional gathering. The big LCWR assembly is also coming up in the summer, typically happens first or second week of August and CMN is typically there. So we will be having a side meeting that will convene the advocacy council. It won't be formal in the sense that, you know, if you're not there, you're not part of a council. It's just those women who are there and who are interested in being part of it. Uh, or if you're interested in being part of it, but you won't be there, but someone in leadership in your congregation will be, then we open the doors and open it to whomever to just come get a sense of what, um, what we what we're doing and kind of how we're growing. Um, so that's great. We're thinking it's probably going to be on Thursday, August 8th. So keep that on your calendars. And then lastly, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to try to do webinars every quarter and share different information. Today it was about kind of how we ended up from last year in the trends and some interesting things that have been happening with the church and you know the most up-to-date issues around various states. But it may be different, you know, it's, it's more update important information that we want to give you. So we'll be doing that on June 1st, so the first Friday of June. So keep that in mind. Um, the other big save the date is around the conference I mentioned. If you are going to be in DC on April 25th or aren't too far and can make it our way, welcome, welcome. We, we just encourage you to come and be part of this really exciting book launch, conference, gathering that it, that's happening. But we're, for those of you who aren't um, a, you know, privy to come, you can't get here or just can't make it, um, we're gonna be live streaming the event. So I have a click through here that will show you on our website. If you go to the, the conference registration, you'll see that you can, you can actually go in and register like you're attending because we, we wanna know who you are. Um, and don't feel like you, you don't have to click this, like, or I mean, you don't have to fill it out if you're not going to be here physically. We want to know if you plan to come or if you plan to, to be with us virtually because we are live streaming the event. And there's a, a box that you can check to let us know that, hey, give me the information to, to, to be uh, connected to the live streaming. So we'll do that 
will connect with you, but you still have to fill out the conference registration, so keep that in mind. Um, so again, that's April 25th. So now it's our Q&A time, and I, let's see. Daniel, do we have any questions? We had a couple that were already answered. Okay. It looks like um, we had a question about how we would get to the, to the page for, for, for First Fridays, and that is now live, gratefully. It started live last night. It's our normal web page, and then uh, slash, is that front slash, first dash Fridays. So it's all there for you. We had another um, question about, will you be sending attendees the copy of the slides from today's webinar? Most definitely, we will definitely be sending that out. So if you uh, are on now, or if you know um, somebody that missed it, even if they let us know that they were interested in the webinar, we're gonna go ahead and just send out a link for maybe the video, we'll see how all that works. If not, uh, for sure, the presentation itself. Um, so, absolutely. Any other questions? You mentioned getting a one pager for the LCWR region meeting. Is that what is on the web or will you have one? No, we're gonna have one. Thank you for asking that question, Reg. Um, we definitely wanted to share a little bit of information about the Advocacy Council and what women can expect and how they can get involved, what we're doing, what we're, we're dreaming of doing, um, a little bit of information about First Fridays and what that means, and then just some general information about Catholic mobilizing if it's new to folks. So it would be just a general uh, information sheet to, to share. So we'll, we'll be getting that out. And if you're on today, which you are, and others who said that they were interested in growing the council or guiding the council, um, who've you know made themselves known to us? We'll we'll get it to everyone. So thank you for that. Any other questions? All right. How are we doing on time? We might even be able to end early. Just leave one more second in case someone has a last burning question. All right, so hearing nothing, I wouldn't hear nothing anyways because we're, we're not we're not communicating in that way. But seeing nothing, um, I think we're we're at the end of our time. So the last thing I will draw your attention to is our emails. So you have heard from Sister Alaria today, or and mostly about her and the the co convening and co conspiring that we've been doing together, um, and she's been at this for many years. So. Thank you for Sister Ilaria. Um, her email is here. Um, and Emma, our state's a person who does our community engagement, her email is here and my email is available. Um, Sister Ilaria, did you want to offer any, any sort of closing comments? Uh, just to say hi. Uh, that this is a work in process. So uh, this webinar is uh, starting something new for us and that in which we hope everybody is going to be involved. We going to LCWR meetings. We and talking with several sisters. We we felt that there is like a need of connection among ourselves to network together as religious on this topic. Uh, many times we feel like isolated and we work in our state with other organizations, but we felt that there is like a need of um, a bigger network just with uh, that speak the same language that we do so this is a starting point uh, let us know question answer suggestions idea uh, we are just taking the lead of this momentarily just to put it in start and uh, you are all welcome and give us good ideas thank you Great, exactly. Um, the emails are there for you to contact us, reach us um, with your questions, your comments, your, your good ideas, and um, we'll be happy to receive, receive that and respond to you. Um, thank you for your time today. Thank you for your energy. Please consider 
the last couple of minutes going back to the first Friday page and seeing what you would like to do for today, this first Friday. Um, you'll be hearing more information about the one pager, uh, certainly the monthly information and, and other details about the, uh, the areas that we talked about, the Advocacy Council's growth and upcoming events. So we are grateful for, um, for you and for your, your leadership in your communities and your willingness to, to collectively network with us to push the death penalty to a final point here in the United States. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>